Pump oversizing is the most common reason of inefficient pumping system operation. Oversizing means selection of a pump with bigger flow and hand than a pumping system needs. Why it happens? What solution can be found? In this video, we are going to consider it in more details. How a pump user can understand that the pump is oversized. This is the list of evidences which can say that the pump is oversized. Excessive current of an electric motor, application of the throttle control, vibration and noise of pumps, valves, pipes, cavitation in the pump, extra maintenance cost, shutdown of electric motors. Let's look at the graph. For example, the required flow is Q1. The calculated system curve is presented in the graph. In accordance with the system curve for the flow Q1, the pump with the head H1 is necessary. Pump number 1 has appropriate parameters. If the pump number 1 has been selected, then the operating point would be number 1. It will lay within the operating range. But the pump number 2 has been selected. This pump has the higher head and the same flow. Let's find the operating point for the pump 2. You see that for this pump the operating point is 2 and it lays outside the operating range in the area of overloading. This fact means that the pump 2 will operate with lower efficiency and lower reliability. If we look at the power curve, we will discover that the electric motor can be overloaded what can cause motor's failure despite on the fact that it is more powerful than the motor of pump number one. The explanation of this fact is clear enough. Pump number two delivers more fluid and operates with more flow and therefore consumes more power. But if the user doesn't have flow matter, this fact is not clear. In this situation, we will have excessive current and a control panel can turn off the electric motor because of excessive current. If there is no control panel or it also was selected for more powerful electric motor, the motor may burn out. Very often, a control panel switches off a pump because of excessive current. It happens because the pump is overloaded. The electric motor doesn't have enough power and control panel switches off the electric motor and give an alarm. Very often the pump user cannot understand what happens. Very often pump users think that the pump or electric motors are defective. Having the pressure gauges, the pump user can define the position of an operating point related to the operating range. This is the another way to define the pump is oversized. If the pump is oversized, it will have pressure head less than the head within the operating range. Try to close the discharge well and see what will happen. How will pressure, current, vibration, noise change? The cavitation is also the sign of the pump oversizing. When the pump operates beyond the right border of the allowable operating range, the in-passage air of the pump grows rapidly. The presence of the cavitation erosion of impellers can say that the pump is oversized. Why pump users select a pump with the more head? The most popular answer on this question is the pump with the bigger head is less problem than the pump with not enough head. The pump with the bigger head will deliver liquid, the pump with not enough head will not. There are different reasons of selection pumps with bigger parameters. Some of them, poor design of a pumping system, wrong calculation of hydraulic parameters of a pumping system, excessive safety factors, Deviation from the project, which can influence the hydraulic parameters. Designing system for future growth of required parameters. System curve changes in time, for example, changing of water consumption. Sediments and corrosion can increase pipes restriction. 
If we understand that the pump is oversized and operates beyond the right border of the operating range, what can we do to provide operation within the operating range? The possible solution is the application of a throttle control. The throttle control will allow us to change the system curve by using the control valve so that the pump will operate within the allowable operating range with high efficiency and reliability. But the energy will be wasted across the control valve. See it in the graph. If we start closing the control valve, the system curve will move to the left and operating point will move from the point 2 to point 2.2. And this point will be within the operating range. On the one hand, we lose the energy, but on the other hand, we provide operation within the allowable operating range. The replacement of a pump with another pump with appropriate parameters, for example, with less head. This solution can be expensive, but it is much more effective. If we replace pump 2 with pump 1, we see that pump 1 will operate within its operating range. What is very important, it will operate without energy loss. The application of EFD allows pump curve to be changed. As you can see in the drawing, how operating points move and get inside the allowable operating range at different speeds. But it is necessary to understand where the parameters at the lower speed satisfy the system requirements. Also, keep in mind that variable speed control can be not very effective for systems with high static head. Trimming of the pump impeller is a very effective method of the energy saving. It is applicable in system with the stable in time characteristic and where it is clear that the pump is oversized, it can give up to 20% of energy saving. Make your pumping system efficient. If you need more information, please visit our website pumpsaudit.com. See you. Good luck.